How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and to a, another a tech news video where we're gonna talk about PCI Express 6.0. Yeah, that's a thing. We're gonna talk about Bitcoin, which probably nobody really wants to hear about. Intel beating AMD and then getting your food delivered by a robot. So yeah, let's get into that. But just before that, if you guys are in the market for a new super fast NVMe SSD, then Reveltech has you covered with the new SN750 range of NVMe SSDs from Western Digital. With capacities ranging from 250 all the way up to 2 terabytes, sequential reads up to 3,500 megabytes a second, and writes up to 3,000 megabytes a second. So if you guys want to get one of these WD the SN750 SSDs for yourself, just follow the link in the video description where you can get it from Rebel Tech. So for our first topic, just to get it out of the way because I know you guys don't really want to hear much about it and that is Bitcoin. So we haven't talked about Bitcoin in a while after its massive crash in the end of 2018 where it reached around $20,000 per Bitcoin and then crashed down to around like 3,200 a year later. We're steadily seeing it crease back up again because this past weekend it actually reached around $9,000 where it gained like 22% in a month. So that's nice, but you don't have to worry because there's not gonna be any like hardware apocalypse a again because yeah, if you want to use a 2082 to mine a Bitcoin, you're pretty much gonna get only like $3 a day out of the card. And then also you still need to calculate in power consumption. So you're probably looking like $2 a day mining with a $1,200 card. So definitely still not worth it. I'm not sure if it's really gonna be worth it later on even for GPU or mining. However, I'm still excited for what Bitcoin actually can do for us, the technology and everything behind it, but I don't think that it's going to be a crazy boom again any anytime soon. Then next up for all of you console gamers out there, former IGN editor Colin Moriarty revealed on his podcast that a bunch of the development kits have been released to developers both for Xbox and PlayStation. But it looks like the PlayStation is more powerful than the Xbox. Now, they don't say really how much. It could be a lot. It could only be a small bit. There's always going to be one that's more powerful. Just depends on how much. Now, again, the new uh, consoles is going to use AMD's new Zen 2 CPUs. And then a Navi GPUs is going to be all custom. The desktop guys, we PC guys, we're not going to get it, unfortunately. It would have been cool to be able to get those on a PC as well because they are more powerful than the standard APUs that we are getting. But that's unfortunately not how it goes. The reports say that the new generation consoles will be able to play games at 4K at 120 hertz or even 8K. However, you could pretty much probably only play Tetris at 4K 120 hertz or, or 8K because there's no way that a triple A title with high graphics is going to be able to play on an APU at 4K 120 hertz. Not even like a 2080 is able to do that. I don't think in a 2080 Ti. However, Platinum Game Studio boss Itachi Inhara isn't really too thrilled about these new consoles, saying that it's a more of the same compared to the previous generations. It's nothing that's disruptive or super innovative. Now, that might be the case as well, but isn't that the same thing that we saw for each generation? The console gets more powerful. Maybe it gets like VR or it gets like motion gestures. But other than that, or Blu-ray player, I mean, I don't think there's that much innovation really going on in consoles. It's more, they want more power, they won't be able to take on higher graphics. And to quote Jeremy Clarkson, power. <laughs> you just want more power to be able to play your games at a higher resolution and better graphics to make it look more realistic. However, I'm not a console gamer, I've never owned a console, so if I'm wrong here, please let me know. If you guys have any cool ideas for a future feature they can add, let me know down in the comments below. 
Then for our next uh, topic, back on Monday's uh, tech news video, I reported that a leaked CPU Z benchmark was posted on a Chinese uh, forum showcasing the benchmarks of Intel's uh, new 10 nanometer Ice Lake i7 1065G7 CPU. However, now we have a more benchmarks release, both on Postmark and a Geek Pinch, showing how the new Intel i7 compares to the Ryzen 5 3500U, beating it by 807 points in single threads, and then 2,274 points or 22% in the multi-threaded test. And that is also with both of them having four cores, eight threads, but the Intel does have a lower boost clock at 1.3 gigahertz, and then a higher boost clock at around 3.7 gigahertz, I believe. But even comparing the new i7 to something like the i9 8950HK, it doesn't do too badly. With Geekbench, it only losing by 135 points in the single core benchmark, and a bit more, of course, in the multi-core benchmark, but it does have two less cores and four less threads, losing by 4,540 points. So honestly, not bad. And even though I really wanted AMD to beat Intel in the mobile market a bit more and let us see more AMD laptops, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case here. Even with the new Ryzen 7 3750H, which pretty much the top of the range mobile chip, not stunning a chance. With the benchmarks we have now, there might be be game benchmarks later on where it's the opposite way we'll, we'll have to wait and see but there might even still be a chance of an i9 version on the new i like 10th generation cpus and then honestly amd is not going to stand a chance so that is what we have now we'll have to wait and see what happens in the future then getting into our second last topic back at Compedex 2019 last month AMD unveiled their new Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and their X570 platform, which now after nine years, we are going to replace a PCI Express 3.0. Now, PCI Express 4.0 isn't actually new. Back in 2017, it was released for the enterprise market, which it usually happens like that. So we've been waiting two years to actually get PCI Express 4.0 now for the mainstream market but also something that i missed at computex was that they announced a pci express 5.0 so even though we we just got pci express 4.0 the enterprise is getting 5.0 two years later but now that's not really what we're here to talk about because pci express 6.0 is already in development with a release date at around 2020 for the enterprise market and then 2021 for us consumers so being that we waited so long for pci express 4.0 after 3.0 now it's just like a rush to get everything out so the long wait again for pci express 4.0 is going to pretty much be short-lived because now almost every second generation um, from platform we're gonna get a new pci express 4 or uh, pci express standard now i i want to actually complain because it's so damn quick every two years we're gonna get a new pci express connection but honestly i don't really care because again more power so yeah, it's there, we're gonna get it, and it's not gonna be that long of a wait anymore between PCI Express generations, and they're also doubling up on the bandwidth for each. More power, it's always better. Then for our last uh, topic, the meme that robots are taking our jobs is kind of getting becoming a reality now as well, because Domino's have partnered up with Nero, which is a robot startup, to deliver your pizzas to your house with a robot car thing. Now it's only in the Houston area, so for our South Africans, don't even think about it. Uh, but how it works is selected customers who order online from one of Domino's participating stores will have the opportunity to use Nero's autonomous delivery, uh, according to a press release. Once I have opted in, a customer can track the vehicle with the Domino's app and then also will be provided a unique pin to unlock a compartment to get their pizza out of the robot. So that's kind of cool, I guess. So no more small, annoying bikes 
being driven i don't know how it works in the u.s here in south africa they have small bikes delivering stuff and it's kind of annoying sometimes but yeah so that's a thing that's going to happen anyway <laughs> thanks for watching guys that's pretty much it for our tech news video for today i do hope you guys enjoyed it so if you did please like share subscribe, and comment like always uh, also let me know what you think of all of the topics we mentioned before with pizza express 6.0 domino's pizza robots and then also intel are beating amd in the mobile scene let me know down in the comments below and i'll check all of you guys next time cheers guys